speaking of 1994, you're rolling along, you're doing well, you're winning races, and going into Michigan, you're 27 points behind Dell Earnhardt. So you're neck and neck. It's just the two of you in contention for the championship. You go into the practice, and Ernie has his accident. At what point did you grasp how serious the accident was? Yeah, um, we had had – this just goes to show you how, how stout that we were that year. I think we'd had our worst qualifying effort of the year. And uh, it was probably something like 13th or 14th or something. And <laughs> yeah. that was pretty bad to us in our book. That was the thing that I think – which it was the same thing with Davey and I, but Ernie Irvin and I, we went there in our race team, not just Ernie and I, our race, we wanted to sit on every pole, lead every lap, win every practice, and win every race. And anything short of that, we felt like we could we could get better. And, you know, even that Charlotte race, how come we didn't sit on the pole? What 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 did we miss that kept us off the pole? But I went over to Ernie's motorhome that night before going back to the hotel, and the car had been um, real loose qualifying. And I said, Ernie, I'm pretty sure when we untape this thing that it's probably going to be way too tight, even though it was loose qualifying. But I said, if you're okay, just so we can get our baseline, let's just untape this thing put some decent tires on it and just make a 10 or 12 lap run in the morning and let's see where we're at. Of course, back then the Durham practice was right after the sun came up. The first one, it's like eight or nine o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> and sure enough, he left pit road and we made a 10 lap run. And I knew I, I should have called him in about lap six or seven stopwatch. It's like we we're we got work to do. We're not, we're not even close. And, Ernie had this this technique that if we made a 10-lap run, he'd run 10 laps, and then he'd just carry the mail through one and two, and then he'd come in. He wanted to get one last feel of that race car. And I remember completing the 10th lap. It was real hazy or foggy, and campfires, you know, you, you couldn't even hardly see the backstretch. And Raymond Fox was kind of standing up on the platform of the of the – deck up top and I was just kind of standing on the on the floor and I remember him running 10 laps and I said Ernie I said that thing looks like it's way too tight bring it on in here he said 10-4 but he did that deal he ran through one and two and all of a sudden I looked and I saw the caution flag waving and I went Ernie cautions out and Raymond Fox looked around me and went I said what he said it's us it's us <clears throat> so I scaled down out the the hauler and Robert scaled down off the hauler and we ran to the NASCAR hauler. I saw Buster Alton just leap out of that, that hauler. And he, you could tell he was in a panic. He was going to the pace car. And I said, Buster, can we ride over there with you? He says, come on, get in now. So we hauled mail around there. And as we pulled up to where the car was, it was sitting just up on the back straightaway, just right against the back wall. And as we pulled up, I went, car didn't look bad. Car didn't look bad at all. So Steve Peterson with yeah. NASCAR, yeah. he had already got there. And Robert and I jumped out of the car, and Steve come running over and said, guys, don't go over there. It's not good. Really? And it's like, what? I was in a state of shock. It's like there, there's just no way under the sun this, this has happened. We buckle these guys in every week. Before they say, drivers, start your engines, and you know there's a risk. This is a practice session, a practice session on Saturday morning. How in the world has this happened? And here's another classic story of camaraderie in that garage area. You said it, us and the three. Yeah. They take the lead one week, yeah. we take it the next week. Well, we're – we're kind of definitely miscombobulated. It's like we don't even know which ends up. They're, they're airlifting Ernie out of there. Well, by the time we finally got all of our bearings and all of our senses and Ernie had left the track on the helicopter and Robert and I are going to go to the hospital, the three bunch, because practice had ended, 
And it was a little, they had unloaded our backup car and put it in our garage stall and put it on jack stands where NASCAR could go ahead and inspect it for us. Just did they help, really? Just trying to help us out. The three guys. The three guys did. Chocolate, I think, led the brigade. Just goes to show you that way that garage area is but i'd never heard that yeah robert wow. and i of course went to the hospital and we were in the waiting room um early late afternoon early evening and, and dr erlinson i still remember his name who was the neurologist uh he came in and, and it was uh kim and, and vic urban ernie's dad and myself and robert and uh you, the look on his face, he really didn't need to say much. The look on his face pretty much told us the tale. He says, right now, he said, we're touch and go. But he says, I would say we're looking at about a 20 or 25% rate of survival. And, uh, yeah, it's like, how, could, how in the world can this happen? I asked you this about 1993, and I'm going to ask it again. So... Was there ever a point where you said, "Okay, that's it. I, I'm striking the tents," yeah, and and going finding something else to do? If if Ernie Irvin had a passed away with confidence, I say absolutely that yeah. would have been the yeah. deal. I would have. I don't think I'd ever laid hands on a race car again. But once we knew, at least Ernie was going to survive. We didn't know about his status as far as driving a race car. Right. But then, you know, he came back to Charlotte and started recovering there. <clears throat> and I remember sitting in his hospital room, and he says, y'all be there for me, won't you? And I said, Ernie Irvin, <laughs> that car, and to the best of my ability, every member of that race team will still be there when you come back and start driving again. And that was a pretty that was a pretty tall. I looked at myself, boy, you just really bit off a lot here. I hope <laughs> yeah. you can live up yeah. to what you just said yeah. to him, but I meant it as long as it was things that I could control. 